You had a hot take the other day on Get Up. You were talking about your former coach, Marvin Lewis, and saying that he's the top head coaching candidate right now with the Bengals. He did take the team to the playoffs seven straight times. And I'm seeing Stephen A. Smith's eyes really perk up here. It looks like he's really paying attention to the subject. So let's do this. Uh, Nick, why don't you make your case on Marvin Lewis? And then, Stephen A., why don't you respond? Sure. So, so first of all, just in case, just to ensure anyone that I'm not biased, Marvin Lewis never actually coached me. He left the Ravens before I got there. I played against him a bunch of times, but I never um, was coached by him and never met him. So it's not coming from a place of bias. It's coming from the fact that I'm tired of people evaluating Marvin Lewis like fans. Like fans have full-time jobs. They got other things to do. So at the end of the day, they look at things like playoff record and or Super Bowl championships. And they're like, all right, he's the GOAT. He's not. We are better than that. We have to take into account context. And what Marvin Lewis did at Cincinnati is as impressive as what we've seen just about any other coach short of Bill Belichick do. What he, is, what he did there was he increased their win percentage by 21% from the 10 years before he got there to his time there. He did that. You know what uh, Bill Belichick did? He did it by 31%. That those of the kind of Hall of Fame coaches that we have in the NFL right now, that is as impressive as it gets. I think Pete, Pete Carroll, 11 percent, Andy Reid, 8 percent. I think Harbaugh, 7 percent. And also to the point, don't be a fan and understand that context matters. Everyone in the league knows that while Marvin Lewis was at Cincinnati, they were renowned as the cheapest organization. They didn't have a general manager. They had a Spartan um, kind of scouting staff. They didn't have the facilities of other people. So what he did there is tantamount to like a number 16 seed, making it to the Elite Eight, and then everyone looking at them and say, but you didn't win a championship. You're a failure. You're a bad head coach. The context matters, and it, it's underappreciated how much he did with little like he is running this race every year or he was with a with a weight vest on and he managed to win the division four times got into the playoffs seven times you know how many times they did either of those mm -hmm. th things in the 10 years before he was hired zero mm -hmm. and he did mm -hmm. all this in a division with two coaches who are probably going to go to the hall of fame in harbaugh Tom and tomlin bill belichick was in that awful division where no teams were good or competitive or well run Dominate. and dominated for that. So I think all that matters. Go ahead, Stephen A. Yeah, yeah, you got to give me a chance to get at you about this because the show's about to end. That's one of the most asinine things I've ever heard coming out of your mouth. And I don't hear asinine things coming out of your mouth. You're a pretty brilliant brother. But this ain't your brightest day. Let me be very, very clear. I don't, you said context. That's the operative word here, Dominique, context. Because if you're talking about, listen, you're a moribund franchise, you losing, do you bring somebody in to kind of help be somewhat respectable? I think this guy should be a head coaching candidate. I'm not opposed to that, so I don't challenge you on that one. Do I think that Marvin Lewis deserves another head coaching job in the NFL? Yes, I do. I have never I have never swayed away from that. When you say top NFL candidate, uh, so can I, okay. can I, can I respond to that I don't know that about that. But hold, hold, hold on, hold on, no, hold on for a second, because that's not even my important point. My important okay. point is this. Contextually speaking, as somebody who I consider to be a winner, I consider to you, you to be a winner as a person, as a professional, your level of intellect, I consider you, you to be a winner a in a lot of ways. There is no way in hell Dominique Foxworth coaches in the same place for 16 years and never wins a playoff game. Now, you can't uh, talk about Marvin so, Lewis without bringing up that. Because the objective fine. is to win. 16 years, not one single playoff victory, 0 and 7. All I'm saying is I'll take every positive thing that you said about okay. him as long Got as, it. from a contextual perspective, as long as you're willing to say, yo, he ain't won a playoff game in 16 years. Oh, that's an embarrassment. 0 and 7 in the playoffs is okay, more than enough then we reason. Good. Then we to, good. More than enough reason to then we fire good. a coach. But it is not enough reason to, under, to not appreciate that he is the best candidate out there. And what I mean by context matters, to your first point, is he is doing so much with so little. So, like, let's say that Stephen A. University is something that exists. And then there are two applicants. One of them has a 1600 SAT, 4.0 GPA, and has three pages of extracurricular activities and is perfect. The another one has a 1400 and 35 and no extracurriculars. You're going to look at that and say, let me take this one who's a better candidate. 
But what if you sit down and have a conversation with them and understand that the context is the one who had a slightly lower GPA or the one who had a slightly lower SAT, they were a single parent home. Their mother was a nurse. They had to get home to take care of their of their of their kids. They had to do all that thing. I get so where you're that going. Context matters. I get where you're going. So that the point the point in that situation is that person covered so much more ground, accomplished so much more, is so much more impressive because they don't have the support as the other person. That's the only point that I'm making. I'm not saying, so if you're hiring Marvin Lewis because you're like, hey, he can make our organization respectable. I agree with you. That's not why you should hire a head coach. That's a bad reason. The point I'm making is that imagine that student, or in this case, Marvin Lewis, imagine him in a situation where he has a general manager. Imagine him in a situation where he has a full scouting staff. Imagine him where they have a top of the line facility. Imagine him in a we situation where, where quarterbacks the last word. don't threaten to retire let's, if they have to come back. To that Dominique, let's give Max the last case. word. You're making, Dominique, you're making a case why Marvin Lewis should get another job eventually. I agree with that. Even though the Bengals trended in the wrong direction, had losing seasons, so still, I. I agree with that. That's different than saying he's the best available candidate. Give me a young guy who's paid his dues and who looks like he has higher Eric upside B-enemy. than a guy. You can't just say be enemy. Exactly. There are there are offensive coordinators and coordinators out there who I'd like to see get a shot and see. See what that offensive coordinator is. stuff is nonsense. Tread, who you know will make yourself, you'll make your team respectable, but maybe no, not Super Bowl No, the point champion. is they'll be better than respectable if you give him the support that he deserves. The point is that he can do more than maybe, what he did at Cincinnati not. because Cincinnati was he not He never had here. the support, the Dominique. The point is never chasing, in 16 years. these offensive coordinators is a fool's errand. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.